Hi guys, my name is Ryan Powdell. I'm a CP and a CMA from Ontario, Canada. Today I chose a topic is costing job in Canada. This is an interesting topic. I wanted to make that video for a long time. So I know some of you may be interested in working in costing field in Canada or if you are already in Canada, then you want to look for a job in the costing. So what are the job responsibilities that being a costing manager or being a cost accountant what you need to do at the corporate workplace so that's what i'm going to discuss here and a costing job is um, i always tell everybody that if you really want to or you know drill uh, into the career yourself you start from costing because why am i saying that so let me explain to you because costing, when you do a costing, you really understand about the cost structure of the product or even the services. So when you know that, you know, the second thing is a sales comms, right? Sales, you can do a sales better if your cost, cost structure is already better. So when you do really, really well in managing your cost, then of course, you can grow your business you will be a all you know you will be a really important contributor for the growth of the company and you will be doing a lot of analysis you will be you know comparing the large volume of the data probably and you will know a real uh, information about the company after the owner if you are in the costing side and then most of the companies, you know, one way or another, like sales and costing, the owner is always, uh, always be in this, these two areas so, so closely so that you have a good opportunity to interact with the owner and then you always get their perspective as well that how can we make the business better and business is efficient so as a costing manager as a cost accountant what would we do in canada when you go to a corporate workplace one is you maintain the standard cost you know one of the thing is you always maintain the standard cost what does a standard cost means is the cost you know you you have a better estimation about the company you know the company well and you always say that in order to you know let's say make this one particular product so i need x amount of the material i need x amount of the labor i need these are the bill of material i need so there are certain things you can you can generalize or you will have a history also you can take a look and then from there you can build as a standard cost so based on the standard cost you always create your budget and you always compare with the actuals actual will happen in a given month you compare the standard you set that this is what i'm supposed to be but I'm running with this particular trend. Maybe labor cost went up, maybe material cost went up significantly. Maybe, you know, a lot of things you buy from the US and then exchange rate was very different than what you projected initially. So maintain the standard cost. That's a bill of material and routing process because you might have a machine, you know, multiple machine there. And from those machine is one work center you have so each work center you know you can use maybe doing the packaging or doing the production or so many other things so make sure that those costs are uh, accurate and as I said up to date uh, so that you know cost data is always like your actual is in line with the standard it it's not necessary i'm telling you that it's not necessary that your cost but again it's always better to if you project the future better then it's always always good 
so analyze the production cost right you always need to analyze the production cost like your raw material labor labor cost raw material and overhead cost like you know you have the electricity you have all like you know rent rental space how big space you are using so those are all the overhead cost or the people there uh, like um, you you can consider those are the like supervisor and some other people they're on the different level of the people you can consider those as a uh, just just make sure that you have a better uh, like um, analysis uh, for those analysis of those data so that you can precisely saying that yes our costing is going up because raw material because of the labor cost because of the you know overhead cost so as a costing manager you should have a clear picture about uh, how the cost is uh, trending inside the company and uh, prepare the cost variances variance report as i said actual cost and standard cost actual is what's the actual cost going right now and what was the standard cost you set up at the beginning of the year as a budgeting process so why it is a different and if you see that you have a lot of like insight with the costing then you can tell the owner or you can tell your boss and provide a recommendation that you know how can we correct those like things so that we can bring the cost down so sometimes you have to develop the cost like for the new product you are going to issue a new product so what would be the cost what would be the like you know all other things you need to do who who you need to bring over to the team maybe probably you need new team member new skill set very like you know very different type of the skill set you might need the new material new metal or new probably the equipment so and the new packaging right new packaging new bill of material all other things also so you need to do a cost estimate so i have a few examples here so it will be super clear after that so conduct the regular inventory audit because auditor will come and then they do the audit so that you know you always attend with the auditors and explain them that you know how the costing is done how the fx is playing the role so there are a lot of things costing is is not that easy though but if you have a clear understanding if you have an in-depth understanding like the video what i have developed here so it would be not easy and then you always need to like the analysis now, that was my favorite part right everything i do is through the analysis and everything i do is a through the modeling approach so that's that's what i i developed my career and analyze the cost to identify the area for cost reduction it's the same thing like before any area you see that you need to reduce the cost or you identify the problematic area then you need to like uh, identify that and you need to communicate back to the uh, like uh, people senior people who who could able to take the action so that you know those corrective action will be taken in the company to reduce the cost so prepare and present the costing report to the management you can build the costing report like you know different segment of the cost like you know cost inside canada cost inside i mean that the cost of the product cost for uh, the product that you supply within canada product cost that you supply in the u.s maybe other countries as well there could be an additional cost there could be an additional warehouse we need to acquire or we need to take the you know rent so there are a lot of things right and then you might need to you know if you go and uh, have a like uh, your your warehouse for a really really far from the company then you might need to do a lot of the freight or maybe in and out like uh, freight uh, there are so much other things also will be associated with the costing like if you are very efficient on the costing side maybe other indirect costs that you know deliver the product to the customers and all other things are costly that do not work either because ultimately it will hit your ebitda it will hit your profitability on the bottom line and always when you prepare a report try to prepare you know nice report nice layout nice color you know 
proper like you know when you show the trend showing the proper color key highlights key inside so make sure that you do very thoroughly and as a cost accountant make sure make sure your accuracy is a key because if you don't have a proper accuracy even though you do a work very fast but you are not accurate you have a lot of like you know data integrity problem then really you are not fit in the uh, in the costing side because costing is so critical because everything is based on the costing if you do a small component if you miss in the costing then your result will be completely different and then company will have a loss position right because you you did not uh, add one of the ingredients uh, you know to make the final product and then cost will be different work closely with the production and the operation people you know they are in the warehouse they always ship the product and they look at the inventory every every warehouse self like you know that there is a uh, you keep the inventory in the every spot there so that is called self so they always go they look at that just make sure you track that and accurate tracking of inventory and production cost also because same product you might get from the multiple vendor and maybe multiple vendor you may, may need to pay a different you know cost you know based on the vendor also and based on the urgency too if you don't have the product you need to get that right away in the warehouse so that you know you need, you need to ship uh, your client so prepare a profit margin report so you might be wondering why do i have to do a profit margin as a costing you know person because some companies they ask you to do because you have a very in-depth knowledge about the costing and then margin report is all the revenue is on the top line minus cost then that's your margin that's a dollar margin you divide by your revenue then that's your margin percentage so it's a very common that you may get a request from the owner that can you do a margin report at the end of the month so that we will review the margin margin is a critical so critical for the company and you can fix any other things but not the margin if you have a margin problem then you know there is very little you could do on the other side um, right margin is like you really you are really paying the product and uh, you are selling the client even though you have to increase the drastic price to the client i don't think client will accept that so that's why costing monitoring the costing and uh, the outcome would be the margin it is a super critical for company's success and provide various reports to the department on a regular basis you can see a variances report you can do a labor hours you know how how much labor you know they are spending the hours and uh, what is a downtime of the machine you have the machine but there is no electricity or downtime or machine didn't work some faulty parts or something found or efficiency what's the efficiency we, we are gaining what's the labor cost is it going up is it going down or do we get easily you know those those position can we hire easily you can get from the hr like how how easy it is you know to hire the people what's the volume we are able to you know produce from each machine and material usage also you know how we are using using the material or we have a lot of material maybe you know it's a, it has a like date expiry also so we should be using those properly we have a, it's a costing department is one of the like critical so critical department in the company and analyze cost projection and participate in the budgeting process so let's take an example one good example it's like a, it's a real example also i just want to show abc company paid two dollar ust for ten thousand ball joint two dollar ust you know abc company paid two dollar ust for ten thousand ball joint remember that two dollar ust each uh, two dollar ust uh, abc company paid two dollar ust um, for ten thousand ball joints um, that they purchase from china i mean that this is a unit cost i mean here it's not super clear but it is the two dollar is the unit cost the business paid 350 dollar for the ocean freight because when they bring from china to canada they need to pay the ocean freight 350 dollar usd and uh, to deliver the goods to canada port because the that will bring up to the canada port 
and then the company has to pay the pay the duty you know at the uh, canada customs which is uh, i just put it here six percent uh, duty which they paid on the canadian dollar price which is truly like uh, they always take in the canadian dollar they multiply with the, you know what's the usd dollar they look at the quantity what's the total usd they come and multiply with the exchange rate closing rate for that day and then they get they multiply with six percent so the custom used 1.35 to convert usd to cad i just have one assumption here and the shipment was also placed on hold at canada custom for inspection could be easily you know um, uh, have this type of the things and business received a 50 cad storage charge for the freight uh, you know from the freight company so uh, sometimes uh, the shipment is whole they need to do a proper inspection make sure it's a right product is coming in uh, coming to canada and uh, also the product is as per the spec that you know they always have in the paperwork that's their job and uh, we always always you know honor the job they need to do go through that and subsequently uh, right and subsequently that we also need to use the local freight now you know to get the product from the port to the warehouse another hundred dollar and the shipment is insured like you know we we also have insurance to pay like twenty dollar anything happens on the water or anything happens then it's a we are paying that uh, insurance also so now wh what is the cost unit cost for that product right we pay two dollar to to the like uh, supplier in china of course when they do the two dollar of course there is a lot of ingredients they use they use the metal grade one metal you know a lot of things they have a work in progress so a lot of things they have to go through so uh, now i just showed here one particular example we can make this example as a very different way also we can think about if we have this factory in canada then what metal do we need this ball joint metal and what's the labor cost we have to do you know how are we going to do you know during this uh, uh, this uh, ball joint makeup process uh, what other like uh, ingredients we need to make in order to make the ball joint proper ball joint so anyway so now ten thousand uh, dollar like i mean that ten thousand quantity we purchase two dollar usd dollar so that we have a twenty thousand usd and then 1.35 fx when you multiply twenty thousand usd to convert to a canadian dollar is a twenty seven thousand dollar so that is our cost that we paid to our supplier then after that we paid in the canadian port we paid the duty is basically that you know twenty seven thousand is a canadian dollar times six percent we multiply six percent sixteen hundred twenty dollar we paid the duty charge then we paid ocean freight right but ocean freight is in the usd dollar which is a 350 350 multiply 135 so then 472 is the is the ocean freight cost that is also product related cost if we did not bring the product then we wouldn't be paying that ocean freight then after that we have a storage charge that we need to pay because they had to do an inspection and company had to pay the storage like charge because those cbsa officer they had to go through and then make sure that they need they need to check all the product to make sure every product is accurate you know according to the spec which is a very very important process that you know it, it happens in the canadian border and now the other thing is a local freight also hundred dollar and uh, insurance cost twenty dollars so by all means this all the cost you add that so you have a twenty nine thousand two hundred sixty two point five zero so that's what total cost related to this shipment and when you divide by ten thousand then you literally you know literally divide this divide by ten thousand then you get that two point nine three remember that we paid to uh, to vendor two dollar at the origin that is a usd dollar but when it came to canada then we did the costing of this product is a 2.93 dollar let's go through now 
when you receive the inventory in your accounting system what entry will be booked so when you receive the inventory in the system as an accountant what entry will be booked in the system so you always debit the inventory you debit the inventory it's a uh, the inventory system is uh, um, is a perpetual system i'm just talking as soon as you receive the inventory it's available for you so inventory will be debited twenty seven thousand, and then credit is an inventory clearing account you credit the inventory clearing account twenty seven thousand because that clearing account will be clear when ap receives the invoice they verifies everything is accurate they have a packing slip they really receive the product so ap has certain you know certain processes if he has to go through so twenty seven thousand that's the way they do so an ap needs to enter all the landed cost invoice landed cost means the cost we incur to bring the product from china to canada i mean that any other country i just give this as an example doesn't mean it could be from india could be from china could be from mexico could be from any country right so then those duty, ocean freight, local freight, storage charge, someone has to enter in the system and run the recosting so that system will do a recosting like uh, same way the product cost like 2.93 to increase the product cost 2.93. So then what entry system will make? System will do this debit this first the uh, inventory clearing account 27,000 because that was a credit before we need to debit that make sure it will wipe out from the system that balance then we have a all other cost we process there that will increase the value of the inventory because these are inventory related costs that's why debit you know here inventory duty paid debit inventory ocean freight paid debit you know inventory i mean storage charge paid local freight paid insurance cost paid so now the total accounts payable you need to pay back is 29,242.50 so this is the way your system does and which is real if you think about that so these are all the cost you incur is you are increasing the value of the inventory ultimately this, this is the way i showed you here exactly but how the system does is a system can do the manual way system does when you enter those cost right and then in the costing model then what happens when you do a recosting so these all the landed cost will be applied against the inventory so that your skew inventory skew cost will increase you know by those landed cost now sometimes what happens that when you go to the you know when you go through the shipment and then you found that one piece was really missing there you didn't find the one piece at all what do you do so you go and then of course there is a lot of like analysis you need to do root cause you know analysis you need to go through your operation team should be informed you know who received that then we have to let the vendor know that we didn't receive one quantity but there are the process what i'm saying is because it's a perpetual inventory should be accurate all the time then you have to go debit your inventory adjustment expense you debit that and you credit the inventory because you don't have that inventory in the warehouse now so you will deal with separately on the payment side if it is a real or not then you know you may find later on that oh this is a one part is available after that right so you you can you can literally do that uh, so that's why this is uh, when you did like it's just a uh, one piece so it shows here the two piece you can change that one right so you can just change this as a one because your example has a one and but it shows here two then same as when you found the inventory what happens you debit the inventory because you have to increase the inventory which is an asset account you need to increase and you credit that you know same way you need to reduce the inventory adjustment expense you need to reduce that i mean credit means reducing the expense debit means you are increasing the expense remember that debit and credit in the expense side is different than on the balance sheet side now you may need to you know package the ball joint now because you receive the ball joint and you need to package that you need to put it in the maybe private level or companies 
own branding box you need to put it there you may need to add the other kind of those couple of component other component also to becomes more attractive that product to your customer so i just want to show here what is a bill of material bomb you might hear this bill of materials you know bill of materials you might hear all the time bill of materials bill of materials or something you know it's a this this is a, like a very popular terminology so what is a bill of material so bill of material list every component required for a product this is essential to assess our product cost we have to break down every cost such as accurate labor and material cost throughout the manufacturing process this is also helpful for pricing and budgeting since business can accurately estimate manufacturing cost through bomb so bill of material what happens here let me show you 2.93 was the original cost we had and then how this cost will go up let's take a look here then you have to add the clear plastic you know you need to add that ball joint clear plastic one other component you add that's the cost so quality control one person has to go through make sure that ball joint is uh, you know in is in the good condition that ball joint is fresh or you know nothing happened it's a good like you know um, i mean that it's a good parts right there is a good grease and all other things graphic printed box it will go through the inside the graphic printed box then they will see really colorful nice attractive you know graphic box has a cost two additional screw you need to add that you know just i just have this example remember that's not uh, you you don't have to because i'm just trying to show you make your brain you know much much clear so that you understand and grease you know additional grease you need to add that and the you have a packaging person time you know 10 second someone has to spend 10 second packaging time uh, production overhead cost there is other overhead cost like you know maybe space how much space it's there maybe that machine has some of the uh depreciation or so depreciation will go in the different bucket anyway because we don't want depreciation to go but it depends on the company you know how much they want to really overload to a costing side and then how much they can think you know they can consider those as a like uh, uh, below the costing i mean that uh, other kind of the scna or some other bucket but anyway it will impact on the bottom line mm, i'm saying that but company can track that slightly differently so that company can have a better you know they can measure the better operating efficiency um they can but they have to be consistent though because they cannot do one month one way uh, another month other way 0.65 additional bomb cost then this product is not 2.93 anymore the product cost is really 3.58 so this is a way you can build the cost building the costing structure so this is the way you can do so if you sold 10 ball joint at 5 each what happens so then 10 multiply 5 50 dollar you have accounts receivable you need to collect your credit revenue is also 50 dollar that's the revenue now you have a cost 3.58 so your 10 dollar 3.58 your cost of sales and your inventory is also reduced by the same amount because that's the inventory value you have like if you want to sell 10 then 10 multiply 3.58 35.76 is the credit credited your inventory is credited now when you calculate margin so what's the margin then your total sales revenue is a $50 that's your sales revenue 50 and less your cost of sales is is the 35.76 so then you got the margin 14.24 that 14.24 when the sales was made $50 then 28.5% is your product margin or you can say it's a, it's a uh, it's a it's a product margin or you can also calculate you know some companies they do material margin separate and product margin right uh, we just did here the material cost this is the material cost on the top here top here is uh, 2.93 what we calculated here is a material cost also we can see that way too 
you can do that way so now inventory system is uh, the there are two types of the system maybe you know other systems too but what i have seen in the past is a perpetual inventory system and a periodic inventory system so perpetual means that every time the inventory is always accurate it's a real time basis the inventory is is accurate so this is a very important right because your inventory has to be accurate all the time if you are selling those inventory you know to your customer you get a phone call you go to the system every single time inventory has to be accurate so you have to make your inventory perpetual that case so if um, uh, once inventory is received you debit your inventory right away right you credit the clearing account when ap processes invoice you debit clearing you credit the accounts payable when they pay debit accounts payable credit the bank simple process right this is a this is a you know flows kind of the thing it will go through from ap and periodic inventory is different because a periodic inventory uh, what happened that purchase account is debited when you buy the inventory and you always use the method to calculate you know ending inventory at the end of the month you say opening inventory loss purchases inventory you know throughout the month so total inventory available you have minus sales you know whatever the inventory you sold in a month then you reduce that and whatever remaining is your ending inventory and you do a count there physical count there then you should found three thousand dollar inventory so sometimes periodic inventory sometimes they ask you to do a cost of sales um, calculation so how to do the cost of sales it's simple you do a opening inventory how much you know and then you inventory purchase during the month you add their total available inventory and you go and you physically count whole inventory and find out that what's the actual inventory sitting in the warehouse which is a ending inventory when you deduct that the remaining part is inventory you sold to to the client if that do not match then of course you might have some you know missing inventory maybe you didn't receive the inventory you know from your suppliers as uh, as as accurately as you think so there could be other problems so this is the way periodic inventory system works the last one um i want to talk here is a goods in transit so goods in transit is if you inventory is a fob origin fob free on board like origin or fob shipping origin so then you have to take the responsibility from the origin you know it's your responsibility anything happens then your responsibility then you need to book a goods in transit inventory anything is sitting in the water or a transit you know already that it's a coming on the you know vessel so then you have to do debit the goods in transit inventory credit the accruals you have to book that accruals so that that is reflected in the balance sheet it's not sitting anything in the pnl these both are the balance sheet item reflected but next month you can reverse that and at the end of the month you can rebook that it's a similar like accruals accruals entry so this is the way you can do so hope you like this video i know it's a it's a quite long but it's a very interesting this costing concept is a very interesting anything when i see a costing then i can talk whole day two days three days also because costing thing is 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 really uh, a favorite topic that i always you know i i always want to do or wanted to do in the past which i did i started my career as a cost accountant and uh, i used to deal with the auditors you know all the times how uh, how the costing was uh, like formulated in the company and it was a very small and a granular process i had to go through to show them that how the cost uh, was structured in the company hope you like this video if you do as usual thumbs up and um, you know you can share this video to your friend uh, to your colleague also 
do not skip the video please because go through one by one then only you will understand if you have an interest in working in in costing in Canada then go through this and then make sure that you understand this job responsibility or if you have any question in any of these you can uh, send me a message and I am I'm, I'm happy to you know clarify you or this is my own opinion by the way you might have a very different opinion different thing so it's just I'm just trying to share you my expertise it doesn't mean that you have to you know you, you have to think that you know this is the only way that we can do the things uh, you know you can think that there are various ways that we can do same things differently so hope you like this video and again thumbs up or share this video and if you wanna know in the future you know like uh, you have an interest in uh, watching the different type of the video let me know as well if you want this spreadsheet also you can you can just you know message me there but please make sure that you send me your email address otherwise i'm unable to send you the spreadsheet thank you so much have a great day